If you're going to throw a chatterbait, you need to have a trailer. But choosing the right trailer can make a drastic difference on the movement of your chatterbait. So today we are going to break down our favorite trailers so that you can catch more fish on a chatterbait this season. Let's go. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. The Hookup Tackle is the world's largest showcase of Mega Bass products, featuring baits and colors not found at any other dealer. The Hookup also offers a wide display of OSP, Evergreen, Depths, Lucky Craft, Jackal, and many more. The Hookup Tackle is owned and operated by family, is staffed by guides and verified tackle nerds who love helping anglers elevate their craft. If you're in the Phoenix area, we'd love to have you stop by our showroom and check out the wonderful world of Mega Bass and the hookup for yourself. If you shop online, there are almost 10,000 SKUs of Mega Bass products alone with hundreds of other companies and new products being added daily. So next time you're looking for that hard to find bait, that color your fish have never seen before, or maybe you just want to elevate your game, look at thehookuptackle.com. All right, welcome back my friends. I am Ben with The Hookup Tackle, AKA The Tackle Otaku, being filmed by my buddy Jeffrey the King. We are The Hookup Tackle USA. All right, springtime, summertime, goes hand in hand with one of our favorite baits and that is the Chatterbait. It's just got a ton of versatility. It's got, you know, everything the bass are looking for. It's got the profile, it's got the coloration, so it could be a shad, it could be a bluegill, it could be tons of different forage. It has flash, it has sound, it has all the things that we need to trigger strikes. But a lot of anglers just get a chatterbait, grab a trailer, and they just go. And they use one trailer, one bait, and they just assume that, oh, you know what, they're not, not eating the, the jackhammer today. Uh, I'm just gonna try something else. Without thinking that the trailer selection may be making pivotal decisions in the bass's mind whether to eat it or not. So today we are gonna play with some different trailers. We're gonna outline some of the things that we've learned, some of the things that we use, so that hopefully you guys can catch more fish on chatterbaits this season. Now, I keep saying chatterbaits, that's just what I call them, but we all know that essentially I'm talking about the evergreen jackhammer, right? So the three different baits that I'm throwing, I'm throwing the jackhammer, throwing the new stealth blade, so this is the smaller bladed guy. And then I also throw the blade waker. So those are the three made ones that are in my arsenal. But it doesn't matter what you guys are throwing. If you guys are throwing the Thunder Cricket, if you guys are throwing the, you know, just the regular, you know, chatterbait from Z-Man, it doesn't matter, right? We're gonna talk through trailers and what each one does, what's the best case scenario for each one, so that you guys can understand what is happening. Now, typically, if you guys are in this jackhammer realm, then you know that the Yamamoto, 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 <clears throat> then you know the Yamamoto Zako is basically the bait that you always hear spoken about with the jackhammer. Now, the Zako was designed by Brett to fit on the jackhammer. So if you look at the Zako, it's essentially kind of a fish shaped bait. It has multi segments here in the tail and then kind of this, you know, fishy back end back here, okay? It fits on the jackhammer perfectly. So you get a perfect snug fit with the Zocco. And you can see that the skirt, basically just that segmented tail is going to come out the back. Now, by itself, the Zocco basically has no movement to it, right? So you could put this on just like a swim bait hook or something like that and swim it, and it doesn't do a lot. It's not designed to be a real snaky moving bait or really have any life on its own. By itself, it just kind of comes through the water and doesn't do much. But you put this jackhammer blade in the front of it, and you put that blade and that vibration there, and all of a sudden, that tail and that segment is gonna have just this beautiful kind of wide swimming motion to it. So it's gonna just have this real snaky movement to it that's going to be great for mimicking, you know, larger profiles like a bluegill, a big shad, you know, panfish, smaller bass, that kind of stuff. So day in and day out, this is generally our go-to trailer for a jackhammer or for a regular normal sized chatterbait, just because it's probably the most versatile, 
right? You can fish it quicker, you can fish it slower, and it's gonna continue to move and have that kind of wider, real natural movement vibration uh, that we expect to get from these style baits. Now, what's important to note is that once you find a trailer that you like, you can use this trailer for most, you know, maybe even 70 or 80% of your fishing. But if you guys live in places like where we live, where once chatterbait bite really starts to get hot, you can just look across the lake and eight out of 10 boats are throwing a chatterbait. You have to do something different to differentiate yourself, whether it's your presentation, your angle, whether it's the chatterbait, or sometimes just changing the trailer can make a huge difference in the amount of bites, right? So this is where we're gonna start playing now. I'm gonna show you guys some alternatives to the Zocco that are really important for us to have in our arsenal. Now, here in the store, we see a lot of people come in and get baits like this, like a Kitek or a Skinny Dipper or something like that, that they can throw on their chatterbait. Now, if you guys are using something like this and it's working for you, great. Just keep, keep going. But the reason why you never really hear us talk about this paddle tail style bait on the back of our chatterbait is because this type of swim bait, right, already has a built-in swim, right? It already has, I can fish this by itself. Thank you, Jeff. Dropping chatterbaits over here. You can fish this by itself and it's gonna have just this beautiful kind of side to side movement to it. If you put that chatterbait blade on the front of it, then it's taking this and it's just amplifying it either more. It's just like this cracked out bait fish, which is just way too much for me, right? There are some places, like if you guys are fishing muddy water or somewhere where you really gotta get them fired up, then the idea of going to a paddle tail like this could be a good idea. Even Zocco makes a paddle tail version of the Zocco now. But this is, I mean, honestly, like less than 1% of the time, if ever, are we using this style of trailer on a jackhammer. Usually, we're trying to go the opposite way, right? Usually, this is where we're starting, and then if they're not eating it, we need to go more finesse or tighten it up to get some bites everybody else isn't getting. So this is where we start playing with trailers. So, these are two trailers that are really important for us to add to the arsenal. This is the OSP Dole Life Stick, and this is the Depths Death Adder, okay? Now, for me, the Depths Death Adder is probably the most important trailer for the jackhammer over the Zocco, right? So I would say probably 90% of my fishing is done with one of these two trailers. Now, the difference that the Death Adder is going to do that the Zocco isn't doing is it is a longer version. So on the normal jackhammer, I'm using the five inch. Okay, so the five inch death adder. Let's get it rigged up here and you will see it. The death adder is not designed to be a jackhammer trailer. It just ends up making a great one. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit longer, right? And you'll notice that it's much tighter than the Zocco, okay? So unlike the Zocco that's gonna have this real snaky motion, the Death Adder is gonna have just this tighter quiver. So basically what we've done now is if we think of the chatterbait in terms of like crankbaits, with the Zocco on there, this is like a wide wobbling square bill. With the Death Adder on there, it's like a flat side crankbait, right? So it's tighter, it's a little quicker, it's more natural. So in clearer water or times when the fish are really heavily pressured by switching to that death hatter, I can just tighten up the motion of the jackhammer and I can get more bites. The other thing that's really dope about putting this death hatter on is because it's a little bit stiffer plastic, I could also now add a trailer hook if I'm getting a lot of short strikes. Now, this is something that I learned on Lake BY years ago when the chatterbait bite was going crazy they were literally seeing thousands of chatterbaits a day, right? So they were, they were attracted to the vibration, to the sound, they were attracted to everything a chatterbait was giving it, but they were just short striking it like crazy. Well, by adding a trailer hook to the back, we were able to turn a lot of those short strikes into landed fish. And with something like a Zocco, because it's so soft and segmented, it would just continue to get wrapped up in the trailer. By using the Death Hatter, because it's a little bit stiffer plastic, 
we can now add a trailer hook to the back of this thing and it will sit in a place where it's not going to get wrapped and it will just move with that plastic. So all we do is we just drop the trailer hook on that hook. I use these guys, these little decoy silicone grippers, right? Open that up and that will show you guys. Super easy. All right, and then that little silicone gripper is just going to fit right over that hook like that and just holds it in place and then you're good to go. You've got a trailer hook on there and now you've just bought yourself an extra couple inches so those fish that are just kind of short striking now are going to get that trailer hook on there and you'll land more fish. This is a great technique in post spawn when those fish are still positioned in places where you know the chatterbait is jacking them, grass edges, that type of stuff, but they're just a little more lethargic. They're not quite as aggressive. They're not getting the whole thing and they're more kind of swiping. You can feel them kind of bump and then there's just nothing there. It's a great way to get a few extra fish in the boat. Another great trailer for you guys is the OSP Dole Live Stick. This is kind of a hybrid in between the Zocco and the Death Hatter. It's a similar kind of straight bait, but it's got more flex and more versatility, so you'll get a little bit more life out of this guy. So you're gonna get not quite the super tight as the Death Hatter, but you're gonna get a little more vibration, kind of in between, right? So just a good alternative, again, to show them something different, but it makes an amazing chatterbait trailer. The other one that a lot of you guys like is a fluke style bait. So something like the Optimum Victory Tail, which is one that we use quite a bit. It could be a Zoom Super Fluke, something like that. But again, the same style is just gonna give it not quite as aggressive or wide of a swimming motion as the Zocco, and not quite as tight as a Death Hatter, kind of that in-between zone. Now, the other trailer that I will use every once in a while, this is probably like 1% of the time, but a lot of you guys may find that this style trailer might be really good for your waters, is something with kind of like a craw type, like a rage craw type claw to it. So something like a rage craw or a rage menace, something like this. Something with some claws, they're gonna have this kind of flapping motion. What that's going to do is that's going to help lift the chatterbait up. So if you guys have you know lots of vegetation that's growing up, and you just have a little bit of space from the vegetation of the surface and it's really critical that your bait stay high in that zone. This is a great way to turn a jackhammer into more of a shallow moving bait. You can go with a lighter chatter bait, you can put this on there and it will help give it a little bit of lift so you can tick the tops of that vegetation. Now usually for me, when I get to that situation, I just switch over to the Teco Blade Waker. This is a bait that I've added to my arsenal that I really dig. And I usually, again, kind of the same thing. I roll with the OSP Dole Life Stick, usually on the back of this thing, or the Death Hatter. Either of those two is good. I know Hideki, who makes this, recommends using a Fluke. That's fine. Whatever works for you guys is great. But this guy, is just a great way to fish that shallower zone and then it keeps me in a trailer that I really like. I really like the movement of this bait, okay? So there's a look at some trailers and some ideas on the regular full-size jackhammer. But now there's these newer, smaller, more finessey, you know, chatter baits or like the jackhammer stealth with the smaller clear blade and not the same thing applies to this. If we try to take this same bait and put this same Zocco trailer on the back of it, the trailer is just so big and so bulky now, there's not enough blade here to really push that trailer, so it just kind of rolls and doesn't do a whole lot. So we've kind of had to reinvent the trailer situation with these guys, so I'm gonna highlight some trailers for throwing the smaller chatterbaits as well. Okay, now, before I go putting any trailer on, one tip I will give you guys is I highly recommend you trim your skirt. If you guys are using this Jackhammer Stealth or any of these smaller chatterbaits, I would trim that skirt up a little bit, and here's why. Because this blade isn't as big and wide as the original, it's gonna, it's gonna not be able to pull as much behind it and still track true, 
right? So we wanna shorten this up and take as much of the bulk out as we can. I usually just go maybe about, I don't know, half an inch or so, right? So I just, I wanna leave plenty of skirt because I still want it to have body, right? But that gives it less to have to push straight so it will continue to track true and do what it is designed to do, okay? So after we've trimmed that skirt up a little bit, it's trailer time. Now, there's three trailers that I use on this smaller one, on this Stealth, religiously. And there's a bunch that may be good, so this will be fun for you guys to play with them. But again, I'm trying to get away from this bigger, bulkier, thicker plastic like the Zocco and the Kitex and that kind of stuff. So my normal starting point here is the OSP Dolive Live Stick 3.5. Okay, so the 3.5 inch. And you can use the Spec 2 or the original. Doesn't matter, the Spec 2 just has less salt. <clears throat> so it tends to be a little bit more durable than the original, but it doesn't matter. Just whatever you can find the color that matches best, okay? So this Dole Life Stick in the 3.5 inch fits this guy perfect. It gives you the good blend between subtle yet enough movement and enough motion underwater. So it's going to give you some movement, right? Because it's got still this semi snaky tail without being overly aggressive. It's not too much movement for this little blade to move. This ends up being my go-to the majority of the time. Now, OSP also makes another bait that works incredibly well as a trailer when you can find it, and that's the HP Minnow in the 3.7 inch size. Now, if these were more readily available, I might use them more often than the Dole Live Stick. I, I really have great success with the Dole Live Stick, but the HP Minnow is a great one as well. So it's just got that natural kind of minnow profile to it, but it has this hollow belly in it. So you can see the slit in the back is open. So it has movement without being segmented, and it just works brilliantly behind the stealth blade. So you can add this to the back. You can see the profile is virtually the same. So when you can find these, this is another great one to use. That's a great one-two punch. Little more movement, little less movement here. The other one that works great is again, the Depths Death Hatter. I just dropped down to the four inch size here instead of the three or the five. The four inch fits it perfect. And again, same thing is on the full size one. <clears throat> this is going to extend the bait a little bit more, but it's gonna stiffen it up a little bit. So anytime you go to the Death Hatter as a trailer, you're basically just tightening up the motion. So again, it's gonna be like going from a wide moving square bill, you know, or a wide wobbling square bill to a flat side crankbait. So it's gonna tighten it up, make it a little more finessey little tighter vibration, right? You're gonna get a little longer body out of it. Okay, and again, if you wanted to add a trailer hook, you could, it would have to be a real small one. So it'd have to be a real short shank, right? But again, because this doesn't have a lot of side to side movement, it's pretty, it's pretty stiff. You could extend a hook back there if you wanted to. I find with this bait, this bait's pretty small. So they rarely miss it. It's just a matter of getting them to eat it or not. So once they kind of commit, it's pretty easy for them to get it in their mouth. But that's basically the one, two, three punch on the smaller guy for trailers. All right, guys, well, that is a wrap on our favorite Chatterbait trailers. I hope this was informative. I hope you, I don't know, maybe learned something or something might have sparked some interest for you to try something different than what you're trying now. You know, we just want you guys to have as much fun as you can have on the water and catch as much fish as you can. So if you have any questions, please drop it down below in the comments and I will get to it. Jeff will leave links to all these trailers in the description so you can check them out on your own in more depth. We really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for the business. Thank you for the support. Until next time, peace.